Hello, I'm Justin, a software engineer from RIOC, and I'm one of the software engineers which have developed Crea. And I'm very excited to give you a quick overview on how you can test your APIs with Crea. So first, to install Crea, you can go to the official website, crea.app, where you can download the latest version. To do this, you can simply navigate to the download page and download and install the software for your operating system. So after everything is set up, we can start Crea. In order to use Crea, we need to create or open a project. A project could stand for an application, a domain or something else. So let's create a project. First, we need to select a location. We select the path of where our test project is located, but you can use any location you want. I've created this example API directory for te testing purposes. It doesn't contain any meaningful data yet. So let's select it. Now we have to enter a project name. Let's call it example API. And we have to enter the name of a directory in which the Crea files should be stored. Let's call that Crea. Here at the bottom, you see the full path of where the Crea project file is stored. So let's create a project. So now if we check the directory in which we wanted to store the Crea project, we see that the directory Crea got created. And it contains a kapproach file, which is a Crea specific file for the Crea project itself. Crea data is stored mostly as JSON text in the files which go into the directory, which means you can use version control systems like Git and share your whole Crea project like that with other people. So now for the Crea project itself, we have an assistant which will help us with the initial setup. You can choose here one or both of them, depending on what type of APIs you want to test. So let's only choose gRPC here. Uh, this is just for the initial project setup. You could easily integrate REST API operations later for testing. So now, depending on the gRPC services you want to test, the server may provide server reflection, which is similar to OpenAPI, a specification of your API but it is for gRPC services. But you ha also have the possibility to add protofiles manually, or you could add protofile descriptor files uh, separately. But we will use here server reflection. Uh, here we can enter the URL on which the server reflection is available. Uh, we will use here the Crea example API, which can be accessed under exampleapi.crea.app on the port 9090. TLS validation enabled is fine. So let's click next. Now we can also configure settings on project level, but that looks fine here. And more about the project settings later. And voila, all gRPC service operations got imported. Uh, let's test one. And yeah, it looks good. You can check or change the service reflection import itself by going to project and to importers and select the importer. 
You can change here the importer settings or you could also delete the importer if you want to. Um, similar to the gRPC import, we can import REST API operations by providing an open API file on your local disk or by providing an open API URL. Swagger, as an example, provides such an URL. So let's create a new importer by clicking New Importer. We need to give it a name. Let's call it Example API REST. The type needs to be REST Open API URL. And then if you want to import all operations of an importer to a certain directory, you could do that by entering a folder name here. Let's put all REST operations of this importer into the directory REST. Then we need to give it an URL. In the CREA example API, we can get the open API URL by visiting the Swagger page. which can be accessed under exampleapi.crea.app slash swagger. Here we can click that URL, press copy, and paste it into the URL field. And now we can click save and go back to the project overview. And we see that all operations uh, got imported into the REST directory. If you make changes to the API afterwards, you also have the choice to import all the changes by clicking the refresh icon here. So let's test one uh, REST operation to see whether it works. And it doesn't work now because the endpoint is missing. That is because we only imported the REST operations, which can be identified by the path, but we didn't provide an endpoint yet. In the gRPC import during the project initialization, we provided that endpoint with the project settings. But let's enter it here manually. We can do that by going to settings and enter the endpoint example api.crea.app here. You can send it now and yeah, it looks good. So now after we have imported our gRPC and REST operations, let's set up environments. It could be that you want to use different values in your requests for different environments. A very common use case would be the endpoint which will be different on a local development environment and a production environment. Uh, we can manage environments by going to project and then to environments. So let's create once the local environment, click save and create a production environment. Maybe take a different color and save. You could also first create uh, just one environment, enter all the data, and then duplicate that environment that you only have to change a few things and not everything. But for demonstration purposes, uh, I will create them raw. So now on the environment, let's create the variables. Let's create one gRPC endpoint variable. And one rest endpoint variable. The rest endpoint is the one without the port. Let's click save and do the same for the local environment. I will enter here the local host 
UL because this is commonly used for local development. Click save and go back to the project overview. Uh, here on the top, we can select the environment. Let's take the production one. And now uh, if you want to use the environment variables, we can do that as also we can do that for the endpoint by going to settings and enter here env for environment, pressing dot. And IntelliSense will automatically provide us uh, with suggestions from which we can choose from. Uh, here for the REST endpoint, we have to obviously take the REST endpoint variable, click enter. And now we see that the vari variable is correctly entered by the two curly braces around it. So let's click send to check whether it works. And it still seems to work great. Previously, I've shown you that you can set the endpoint on the operation itself. But we often have a better choice by using settings inheritance in Crea. Usually, multiple operations have the same endpoint, but a different UL path. Uh, we see that path here on the top. So if you want to have the same endpoint or the same base UL without the path on all API methods in a directory, we can set this up in, a, in the directory itself by using directory settings. For that, we just have to select the directory in which the settings should be applied. Shield directories and methods will inherit the settings of a parent directory. So that means in this case, if I set the direct directory settings on REST, it will be inherited by v1, by books, and by the REST operations here. Settings are always inherited hierarchically, which means here from left to right in the same subtree. So let's use here the REST directory and set the REST endpoint here. So now on the operation, we see that server certificate validation and automatically follow redirects is uh, these two are grayed out, which means that these properties are inherited from a parent directory. Endpoint isn't grayed out because we have that we have set that setting explicitly on the operation itself. Uh, we can override the inherited settings on all levels by simply entering a new value. And we can also remove the override by clicking that X or clear icon so that the inherited setting will be used again. If you want to have settings which should be inherited on project level, which means on everything here, then you can use project settings which can be thought of as a root directory. These are avail available here under project and then default settings. Uh, you see here that a gRPC endpoint uh, which we have set up during the project initialization. Project default settings are getting inherited by all directories and operations. So let's update the gRPC endpoint here by replacing the specific value uh, with the environment variable. Click save and go back. And now if we check the directory or the operations, we see that the new value is correctly inherited.
So now let's test the gRPC operations. All gRPC method types are included in the Kreia example API. You can see the method type uh, with the icon here. Echo is a duplex streaming method. Say hello is a unary method. Split is a server streaming method and sum is a client streaming method. On operations with the method type client streaming, we can provide multiple requests. So we have here the first request with the number 21. Let's add a new one with the number 12 and send the request. And the server responds with the sum of the request numbers, which is 33. So this looks correct. So now let's also test the split operation. Let's pass here the text hello world and click send. Because this is a server streaming operation, we can only send one request and the server returns us a stream of responses. In this case, it splits the text by the space character, which means it returns us one response for every world, which is here hello, and here it is world. If you change the environment now and try to submit the same request again, uh, it shouldn't work because the localhost server isn't running right now on my local machine. You can also click here on trace and see where the request went. And now I would like to quickly show you that you can also invoke normal REST operations. As an example, the getBooks method. Uh, I need to change the environment first. This looks good. You see here the HTTP verb in the header. This is a get operation and this one is a post operation, a post, yeah, post operation. Let's click send. And yeah, that looks good. Uh, that's it with the introduction to API testing with Kreia. I hope this video was useful for you. And if you want to learn more about Kreia and what features it has, you can read the Kreia documentation on the official Kreia website.